You all know what it's like to have a word on the tip of your tongue, and you just can't get it out. Now, imagine having that feeling every time you try and say something for the rest of your life. That's aphasia. Aphasia is the loss of language from a stroke or brain injury. Come on, clicker. There we go. This is Keith. He has aphasia, and he's going to try and describe to you a family outing. Can we get some sound? Kiva and um, the other one. I know, but I can't say. Um, um, now, well, there is no cure for aphasia, but there is hope. People with aphasia get better. In fact, if you give them enough treatment and enough practice, there's no limit to how much better people with aphasia can get. The problem is people with aphasia do not get the treatment they need. You have a stroke, you go into a hospital for four days, you get two months of speech treatment, and that's it for the rest of your life. But the good news is we now have the ability to change that. With technology, and especially with technology that we can deliver over the internet, we can now give people with aphasia all the practice they can stand. This is a young woman uh, named Sarah. She had a stroke when she was 19 years old. But she is a great example of the kind of progress you can make when you get lots of treatment and lots of practice. So here she is one year after her stroke. So what's your name? Um, Scott. Oh, no. Sarah Scott, that's right. And now, four years later, after a lot of hard work. Hello, I'm Sarah Scott, and I'm 22. Aphasia is as widespread as Parkinson's, yet most people have never heard of it. There are over a million people in the US with aphasia, and there are over 100,000 new cases each year. During the eight hours that we're spending at this conference, about 100 people are going to get aphasia. Now, while aphasia itself is not well known, some of the people who have it are. Gabby Giffords, the congresswoman from Arizona. Bob Woodruff, the reporter from ABC. And Jill Bolte-Taylor, whose Stroke of Insight TED Talk is one of the most popular TED Talks of all time. It's hard to overstate the devastating impact that aphasia has on a person's life. In an instant, you go from having your thoughts turn into a smooth stream of words to having everything you try and say be slow and difficult. You lose your job, you lose friends, you lose loved ones and family members. Overnight, you're a different person living in a different world. One of the most frustrating things you can experience is to have your intellect intact and not be able to communicate. This is Vahan. He was a jet pilot for Eastern Airlines, had his own charter business, but overnight, everything changed for him when he had a stroke. I have um, two years no speaking. I miss thinking and reading. Vahan's recovery is very different from Sarah's, who you saw a second ago. While his speech is still very impaired, his reading and his writing have improved tremendously. And with that, he can do pretty much anything he wants. He's happily married. He drives all around New Jersey advocating for aphasia. And he even took over as the caregiver for a fellow stroke victim during the last years of that person's life. Aphasia can touch every part of your life. I love this card. This is something that people with aphasia often carry with them, and I want you to look at the bottom especially. 
It says, my intelligence is intact. I'm not drunk or mentally unstable. This tells you pretty much everything you need to know about what it's like to have aphasia in the real world. We have an aphasia support group, and every one of our members says they carry this card or one just like it, and they all say they've had to use it. Aphasia can affect your legal rights, too. These are a couple of court cases that are really disturbing. In both of them, a person with aphasia was attacked, and the judge ruled that they could not participate in their own defense. Their inability to speak was interpreted as mental incompetence. And in this first one, the woman was sexually attacked, told she couldn't defend herself, and that she was mentally unstable. Uh, I, it's just hard to imagine getting much worse than that. Now, there is effective uh, treatment for aphasia. The problem is, most people just don't get enough of it. Many people go and see a speech-language pathologist. That's a fancy word for a speech therapist. These clinicians do great work, but insurance only pays for a couple of months' worth of sessions. There are intensive treatment programs. These are places where you go and you live in a clinic, you work for four to eight hours a day. You make a lot of progress there, but it's really expensive, and if you don't practice when you get home, you lose what you've gained. Then there are aphasia centers. These are places where people with aphasia go to get support and to get treatment. They're also terrific. But believe it or not, there are only 12 of them around the country. They only serve a tiny portion of the people who need them. So if you've got the money to pay for uh, speech therapy, or you happen to live next to one of these centers, you're in good shape. But what about everybody else? Well, this is where technology comes in. Because with technology, we can get treatment to everybody. This is a language exercise. This particular one works on words that have opposite meanings. So you can see hot and cold. This kind of exercise is available on the internet or through apps. And it's a great way to drill on the basics. This is an articulation video. Uh, actually, a video of someone's mouth speaking. Uh, John, who you're going to see in a moment, can say five words on his own, and he can only say them one at a time. But when he uses this video to cue himself to speak, he can give a speech in public. Hi, my name is John. Hi, my name is John. And these are avatars. You can see the avatar on the right side of the computer screen. They can also be used to cue speech and can stand in as a virtual therapist. Now, this is all, <laughs> all pretty good technology, but where we really change the game and where we really bring hope back into the picture is when we automate the delivery of speech treatment. This is when we bring it and make it available to everybody. We're going to do this with the help of big data. And this is something that we all experience on the internet every day. Companies like Google and Amazon have shown us how to do it. We just need to take their ideas and apply them to the treatment of aphasia. And here's what I mean by that. Every time you buy a book on Amazon, they remember it, they add it to your history, and they put you in a group of like-minded people. And they use that information to suggest other products you might like to buy. And of course, it really works. When we do treatment online, we'll do the same thing. Every time you do an exercise, we're going to remember everything you did. We're going to know when you work quickly and confidently. We're going to know when you hesitated and asked for help. And with that information, we can give you the right exercise at the right time. And when we can do that online, we can make it inexpensive, really effective, and available to everybody. Now, the best treatment is only useful if people actually use it. And what keeps people practicing and keeps them coming back for more is being part of a supportive and encouraging community, the kind of community you get in a aphasia center. So guess what we're going to do next? We're going to build a virtual aphasia center a place where people with aphasia can go online to encourage each other and get expert help. You remember those 12 aphasia centers around the country? With a virtual aphasia center, everybody can get to one. Being able to communicate is essential to being human. When people regain their ability to speak, read, and write, they regain hope, they regain their lives. You know the old joke, What's the, how is it that you get to Carnegie Hall? You practice, practice, practice. Well, that's all people with aphasia need, endless practice. And with technology, we can make sure they get it. I want to close with a quote from Daniel Webster, 
uh, who really summed it up. He said, and I'm going to paraphrase him, if all my possessions were taken with me with one exception, I would keep the power to communicate, because with it, I would soon regain everything else. Thank you. <laughs>